we're going to look at how to prove conditional statements. These are statements of the form if something, then something else. In general, there are three common ways to prove conditional statements like this, and we're going to look at the first of those, something called a direct proof, also known as a conditional proof. First, a conditional statement is any statement of the form if some statement, say P, then some other statement, say Q. The statement P is called the antecedent, and the statement Q is called the consequent. The principle of conditional proof says this. If we make an assumption that the antecedent P is true, and from that assumption we are able to demonstrate that the consequent Q is true, this means that given the statement P is true, the statement Q must necessarily follow. In other words, if P is true, then the truth of Q must follow. And so the structure of a direct proof looks like this. If we want to prove a conditional statement if P then Q, we introduce an assumption that the antecedent P is true. Our job is then to demonstrate only that the consequent Q is true. And the principle of conditional proof then allows us to make the conclusion, therefore, if P, then Q. To see how this works, let's prove a simple conditional statement. We're going to prove the statement for all x in the real numbers. If x is less than 0, then the negative of x will be greater than 0. Here, the antecedent is the inequality x is less than 0, and the consequent is the inequality 0 is less than negative x. First, before we even reach our conditional statement, we can notice that this proposition starts with the universal quantifier for all x in the real numbers. This means we need to start our proof by introducing x as an arbitrary constant. We do this by including a statement, let x be an element of the real numbers. At this point, we're required to demonstrate if x is less than 0, then 0 is less than negative x. And this is a conditional statement. Using the method of direct proof, we need to introduce an assumption that the antecedent is true. So we include a line that says, assume x is less than zero. From here, our job will be to demonstrate the consequent. And so we're going to need to include a demonstration that shows negative x is greater than zero. If we're able to do this successfully, then the principle of conditional proof will allow us to make the conclusion, therefore, if x is less than zero, then negative x is greater than zero. Finally, because we are doing this for an arbitrary constant x, the principle of universal generalization will allow us to conclude that this is true for all values of x in the real numbers. This forms the basic structure of our proof. What we need now is a demonstration of the consequent negative x is less than zero. To do this, let's get out a piece of scrap paper. Remember that we've started with the assumption that x is less than zero. This means we can use this fact in our demonstration. So let's start with that. Our goal is to try to show that negative x is greater than zero. And an obvious way to introduce negative x into our inequality would be to simply add it to both sides. This gives us on the left hand side x plus negative x, and on the right hand side 0 plus negative x. Of course from axiom A4 we know that x plus negative x is 0, and looking at the right hand side we know from axiom A3 that 0 plus negative x is negative x. And so this very quickly leads to the statement we're trying to prove. Now that we have a demonstration, let's return to our proof. Notice that our proof already includes the assumption that x is less than zero. And so from here, we simply add negative x to both sides. And recall that we're allowed to do this because of axiom O3. Axiom O3 says that if you have an established inequality, you're free to add any real number to both sides of that inequality. With this, we simply reduce the left-hand side to zero using axiom A4, and we reduce the right-hand side to negative x using axiom A3. And at this point, we arrive at the consequent, 0 is less than negative x. Since we've started with the assumption that x is less than 0, and successfully demonstrated the consequent that 0 is less than negative x, the principle of conditional proof allows us to make the conclusion, therefore, if x is less than 0, then 0 is less than negative x. And since all of this was done using an arbitrary constant x, the principle of universal generalization allows us to conclude that this is true for all values of x in the real numbers. Let's look at a slightly harder example. Recall that axiom O4 says if we have an established inequality, say x is less than y, then we can multiply on both sides of that inequality by a number z, provided that number z is greater than zero. In other words, multiplying an inequality by a positive number preserves the inequality. 
Now, we're probably all familiar with the idea that if we multiply an inequality by a negative number, the inequality should be reversed. But this is not included in the axioms, and so it's something that we need to prove. Let's try to prove this now. We're going to prove the statement for all x, y, and z in the real numbers. If x is less than y, and we have a number z that is less than zero, in other words, a negative number, then multiplying both sides of the inequality x is less than y by z should reverse the inequality. In other words, it should give us yz is less than xz. To begin the proof, we notice that this is a general statement about all real numbers x, y, and z, and so we need to start by introducing arbitrary constants x, y, and z. From here, we notice that the statement we're trying to prove is a conditional statement. If x is less than y and z is less than zero, then yz is less than xz. Using the method of direct proof, we need to make an assumption, and that assumption has to be the antecedent of the conditional statement. This means we have to assume x is less than y and z is less than zero. From here, our job is to demonstrate the consequent. We need to demonstrate the inequality yz is less than xz. If we're able to provide a successful demonstration, then the principle of conditional proof will allow us to make the conclusion, therefore, if our antecedent is true, then our consequent is true. And finally, if we're able to do this for arbitrary constants x, y, and z, then the principle of universal generalization will allow us to conclude that this is true for all values of x, y, and z in the real numbers. Again, this forms the basic structure of our proof. All we need is a successful demonstration of the consequent yz is less than xz. To do this, let's again get out a scrap piece of paper. Since we've made the assumption that x is less than y and z is less than zero, we can use this in our demonstration. We can also notice that our goal is to prove yz is less than xz, which involves multiplication on both sides by z. The difficulty here is that axiom 04 only tells us that we can multiply on both sides of an inequality by a positive number, a number that's greater than zero. It doesn't tell us anything about what happens when we multiply by a number that's less than zero. However, we've just proven that if z is less than zero, then the negative of z will be greater than zero, and so we can use this. Since negative z is greater than zero, axiom 04 tells us that we can freely multiply on both sides of our inequality by negative z. This and proposition 2, the fact that x times negative z is the negative of xz, and y times negative z is the negative of yz, gives us the inequality negative xz is less than negative yz. This is getting close to the inequality we're trying to derive, but somehow we have to flip things around. To do this, let's look at what happens if we apply axiom 03 and add xz to both sides. This gives us on the left xz plus negative xz, which will result in zero, and on the right negative yz plus xz. Next, we can do something similar and add yz to both sides. This will give us yz plus zero on the left-hand side, and it will cancel out the negative yz on the right-hand side. The result is the inequality we're looking for. yz is less than xz. With this demonstration, let's return to our proof. Notice we've already made the assumption that x is less than y and that z is less than zero. Since z is less than zero, we can conclude from the proposition we've just proven that zero is less than negative z. Axiom 04 then allows us to multiply negative z on both sides of the inequality, preserving the inequality. And proposition 2 allows us to say that we now have negative xz less than negative yz. To get the inequality that we're looking for, remember we had to add both xz and yz to both sides. Let's do this now. Grouping on the left-hand side xz plus negative xz, and on the right-hand side negative yz plus yz, we get 0 plus yz on the left-hand side is less than xz plus 0 on the right-hand side. And this gives us our consequent yz is less than xz. At this point, the principle of conditional proof says that since we assumed the antecedent and demonstrated the consequent, we can make the conclusion, therefore, if the antecedent is true, then the consequent is true. And of course, since all of this was done for arbitrary values of x, y, and z, the principle of universal generalization allows us to conclude that this is true for all values of x, y, and z in the real numbers. And this completes the proof. Mm -hmm.